Hi, it's time to celebrate and open up a present that promises to beat my all-time record for laser power. I will test it and open it all the way up to have a look at its inner workings. A glimpse of how far we have come in the art of mastering light. This will be something special. Let's go! Show lasers are meant to be seen, but make sure that no one ever will be able to look directly into the beam or specular reflections of it. And wear laser safety glasses when experimenting with any laser. My channel has reached a magic milestone. 750,000 subscribers. That is mind-blowing. Thank you so much for subscribing and helping me get here. This calls for a celebration. Luckily, Wicked Lasers have kindly sent me a present that is fitting for the occasion. My current record for laser power is 5.7 watts on a laser that can engrave on rock. But this show laser claims to have 7.5 watts of laser power. Going from 5.7 to 7.5 watts in a celebration of reaching 750,000 subscribers on a channel with 75 in the name. I mean, it is 750,000 deca microwatts. All right, I may be pushing the prefixes a bit on that last one, but is it really 7,500 milliwatts? That's a massive claim from such a small battery-powered show laser. Time to test it. I will set the laser power meter to a 503 nanometers calibration. The weighted average of the RGB laser diodes in the show laser. For safety reasons, show lasers will not project a steady beam, which is needed for the laser power meter to heat up when measuring. However, using a secret code, I have access to a pop-up in LaserOS that will give me a steady beam at full power, but only for 5 seconds. My power meter needs 10 to 15 seconds to fully heat up to display the actual power of the beam. At only 5 seconds, it will be at around 92%, so hopefully we will see 6.9 watts after 5 seconds, if the laser truly is 7.5 watts. My laser safety glasses only protects against the blue and green lasers, not the red, so I will hide my head and eyes behind the laptop's screen. Ready to go. Will it reach the confirming 6.9 watts? That's... that's a new record for sure. 7.6 watts. 7600 milliwatts and climbing when the laser shut off. I found that hard to believe and tried a second time. Yep, this is well over 7.5 watts, even after internal losses in the optics. Probably over 8 watts at the aperture. Or an extra full class 4 laser above spec. That's crazy. How did they achieve that? I will open it up to find out. But since I have no idea of how to and could break it, I will first test the laser's wavelengths. The blue is 455 nanometers. Nice! Bluer and 26% brighter than a more indigo for 45 nanometers of same power. Green is 525 nanometers and seems to have two close peaks. A hint of what's hiding inside as we'll soon see. Red is 638 nanometers, spot on for the diode type used, as is the label for all the wavelengths. I thought they typed 445 nanometers wrong, but my bad. It does use a relatively new and, in my opinion, way more attractive 455 nanometers laser diode. With the gathered data, I can calculate the lumens for this laser to be at least 1501, more than advertised. They probably use the older CIE 1924 standard, which is still widely used and accepted. 
More on how to calculate lumens and locks from lasers in an earlier video of mine. Links in all the usual places. Interesting how the very powerful blue laser is still the least bright of the colors, due to our eyes low sensitivity to deep, almost violet, blue. Now let's open this present for real. I have not found any instructions on this, so I guessed my way in. Quite daunting, considering it is the third most valuable thing I own. Here's how I did it. In a music montage with text, so the video can be paused in case, say, a battery change is needed in the future. Wow, look at that. My eyes are instantly drawn towards the optics assembly. So many components crammed into a small space. And six diodes for the three colors. Let's fire it up and figure out the beam paths. Well, do not turn on an open show laser. It is not safe. As a precaution to find out where I could place my camera safely, I tested for beam leakages with a paper lid first. Okay, it is mostly over the galvo mirrors. Expected since the beams are supposed to travel horizontally until they hit the x-axis galvo. This will send the beam vertically up onto the y-axis galvo. I then tried without the paper to see the spread on the ceiling. Quite wide. Need to keep the camera off the plane of the x-axis galvo mirror. Now watch this. Beautiful. One blue, two green and three red diodes. Thanks to what Sinodiludon has taught me from watching his show laser repairs, I think I know the beam paths now. First off, high-powered multimode diodes have high beam divergence. Unwanted in laser shows, so it needs to be corrected. The diodes typically have a highly divergent output on one axis, known as the fast axis, and a less divergent output on the other, slow axis. I am glad to see they used 18 cylindrical lenses for adjusting that alone. The well collimated low divergence red beams are then sent into a so called knife edge array. 
This aligns the beams closely together in parallel, making them appear as one beam. The two greens are also knife-edged together in a different setup, where one beam is bounced off two extra first surface mirrors. Do you remember the two close peaks in the green spectrum? I'll bet the slightly lower peak is from this diode, bounce off two extra mirrors, since there's always a little loss in optics. All the beams are then combined in a dual dichroic mirror setup. Dichroic mirrors are amazing. It is a little hard to film, but if I shine white light at the mirrors, you can tell something strange is going on. The mirror closest to the scanner head reflects blue, but lets green and red pass through, combining to yellow. The other mirror reflects green, but lets blue and red pass, combining to magenta. So the red beam passes through the mirror that reflects the green beam. And the red and green beams pass through the mirror that reflects the blue beam. By carefully adjusting the power to each diode, a lot of colors can be achieved in this RGB setup. Stunning. Absolutely stunning. We have come a long way in the art of mastering light. Click like if you agree. A big, big thanks to all my patrons. The laser power meter was bought with the help from my patrons, making this video possible. For just a dollar a month, you can help me out too and get full access to all my posts on patreon.com. Link to my Patreon page in the description. Thank you. Okay, one last detail for you that have watched this far. The laser cube ultra comes with a mounting bracket pre-installed. I don't need it and like the cubic look without it. However, when opened up, I noticed that light is coming in through the holes for the bracket's screws. We don't want dust to get into the laser and onto the optics. I therefore recommend to cover the exposed holes if the bracket is removed. Alright, once again, thank you so much to all that have subscribed to my channel. Can't believe it is three quarters of a million. Keep watching, liking and commenting on my videos and I will continue making them. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.